Hi, my name is Susie. I'm an activist and a journalist from Auckland, New Zealand. For years I've worked on controversial issues like the corruption of our intelligence agencies. I was severely targeted as a result of my work. This led to my articles being amplified by the world's most accomplished publisher. In 2016, I made a documentary about how and why I was forced to leave my country. I have now sought refuge in Russia and my situation has become public. On 882 6PR, the voice of Perth. It's 12.30 right now and Tony with you and I'm really happy we finally got through to uh, Moscow to my friend over there, Susie Dawson. You're listening to a 95BFM podcast. Susie Dawson is a Kiwi activist and journalist who worked as a member of Occupy Auckland's media team at that time. Now, five years later and following involvement in GCSB and TPPA opposition, she's seeking asylum in Russia alleging she has been spied on, harassed and threatened by the police. Welcome back to The Wire. Now, finally on the show today, last week it was announced that Susie Dawson will be the new leader of the Internet Party. Welcome to the Jimmy Dore Show. We have a special guest with us. It's Susie Dawson. She's an activist, journalist, former party leader and current president of the Internet Party. Susie Dawson, an activist and citizen journalist currently seeking asylum in Moscow, Susie has written extensively on surveillance and the deep state and claims it's not safe for her in New Zealand. My name is Craig Tuck, I'm a lawyer from New Zealand. I act in the area of international human rights. I act for Susie Dawson along with a group of other lawyers throughout the world who act for journalists and dissenters in high profile cases including the case of Julian Assange. As far back as 2012, Susie has been trying to warn New Zealanders and other citizens around the world about state targeting and surveillance of citizens and the methods being used to do it. Surveillance in New Zealand is now so widespread, it's not an issue of police going and getting a warrant and doing an investigation and then it all coming out in court. The vast majority of the surveillance that's undertaken is never going to be aired in a courtroom. And by that I'm talking about cell phone technologies, I'm talking about lawful interception is the term that the companies that do this like to use. There is a corporation in Wellington, New Zealand called SSI Corp. And you can Google them and you can look at their website. And on their website they're so good as to explain at length exactly what they do and, and how legal it is for them to do it. And essentially they can intercept virtually any communication. If they have someone at range they can hear your actual conversations but also through cell phones they can essentially turn them into microphones and hear any conversation that's had within vicinity. They can see your text messages, they can see what photos are on your phone, they can see what files are on your phone, they can read your emails, they can just intercept all kinds of information. Any intelligence service in the world that has significant funding and a real technological research team can own that phone the minute it connects to their network. As soon as you turn it on, it can be theirs. They can turn it into a microphone, they can take pictures from it, they can take the data off of it. But it's important to understand that these things are typically done on a targeted basis. Not only was Susie essentially blowing a whistle on state level spying, she was naming the precise entities that years later it would be proven had in fact been doing it. And the fact that these are private corporations that are doing it should be really concerning to us. The crowd that they got, that they outsourced it to, was TCIL, which was, I believe, Thompson & Clark Investigations Limited. The state is contracting a private company to surveil you. To me, that's really immoral, absolutely immoral. Some six years later, in December 2018, an official State Services Commission report confirmed that New Zealand government agencies had been employing Thompson and Clark Investigations Limited to target New Zealand citizens. This is a private company that had essentially been instructed by state agencies and departments to spy on citizens. More 
than a dozen police staff are under investigation for passing sensitive information to the private investigators Thompson and Clark. Thompson and Clark. Security firm Thompson and Clark. Thompson and Clark. Uh, Thompson and Clark. So Thompson and Clark, aren't they, aren't some of them old police officers? Ah uh, yes, they are. Okay, so does that explain the relationship and the free flow of information? Doesn't it actually seem a bit crass? Um, well. At the end of the day, I guess um, what I trust is people's intent. This report identifies perhaps inappropriately close relationships. Morning teas paid for by um, Thompson and Clark. Invitations to go out for drinks. Were there other companies oh. identified where you inappropriately gave them information or just Thompson and Clark? Um, there, there are a myriad of security companies who inquire of police every day. For instance, insurance mm. uh, security... But that's not my question. People listening to this will think, hey, Thompson and Clark were getting stellar, top-shelf, gold-star treatment from the police. Why? Do you treat other security firms the same as you were treating this one? Yeah. How do you seriously think it looks to, to members of the public listening to this? Thompson and Clark hasn't just been paid by the government to spy on Greenpeace and earthquake claimants in Christchurch. Tonight, Checkpoint can reveal the controversial security firm has been also monitoring the activities of another three activist groups in Northland, Coromandel and Wellington and the activities of at least one further claimant. Susie has been involved at the very highest levels with people facing charges from prosecutions coming out of the Eastern District Court of Virginia in the United States. There are more prosecutions to follow of currently unnamed persons. Importantly, information will be coming out in the months to come that will provide transparency and clarity and lead to accountability. Suppression and prosecution of dissenters can't be allowed in New Zealand or elsewhere. That's why Susie's team is launching the hashtag One Versus Five I campaign and with your help can achieve some important victories for democracy and for each and every one of us.